Good morning, Ignite. We are so happy to have you here this morning and seeing so many faces. Will you stand with me in worship uh, in a prayer before we begin our worship this morning? Dear Heavenly Father, we are just so grateful to be here in your presence today on this Easter Sunday. On this Sunday that you rose from sacrificing everything for us, a debt we could never repay. We are so excited to praise you this morning and ask that you touch us during worship this morning to become better servants for you, Jesus. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you. And in your name we pray, God. Amen. Fearless, I'll take a stand. 
the great I am. We are so happy to have all of you here this morning. I love seeing these peaceful. That makes me so happy. We only have a few announcements this morning. Um, the April mission opportunity for CT is both for kids' sake to support the Big Brothers, Big Sisters of Zanesville. CT will be represented by a team of our youth on April 19th. The goal is for each team to raise $500. So if you're interested in purchasing a raffle ticket or donating to the cause, you can speak with Lisa Exman or Katie Garrett on that issue. Um, also, the tech team for Central Trinity will be holding a training day on April 16th, 5.30 to 7.30. So Michael and I will be here um, back in the booth and there will be snacks and refreshments. So if something that you're interested in uh, is volunteering on cameras or slides or the audio or online streaming, it's not as hard as you may think. So we would love to come and see you um, join us for that um, as well. So that'll be on April 16th from 5.30 to 7.30, which is next Sunday. In your bulletin or online bulletin, you can find a little cardstock yellow paper in there. This just shows that the who the li lilies were given to or spring flowers were given to. So if you want to check that out, feel free. You can find that in the bulletin. I think that is all the announcements this, for this morning. So if you'll join us in our next song, My Jesus. Are you past the point of weary? Is your burden weighing heavy? Is it all too much to carry? Let me tell you about my Jesus. Do you feel that empty feeling? Cause shame's done all that's stealing. And you're desperate for some healing. Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can't say. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. And let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen, amen. Broken wipe away the tears, broken dreams and wasted years, until the past to disappear. Oh, let me tell you about my Jesus, and all the wrong turns that you would, going undo if you could, who can work it all for you? Let me tell you about my Jesus. He makes a way when there ain't no way. Rises up from an empty grave. Ain't no sinner that he can save. Let me tell you about my Jesus. His love is strong and his grace is free. And the good news is I know that he can do for you what he's done for me. Let me tell you about my Jesus. Let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. He will take my cross to Calvary, pay the price for all my guilty. Who would care that much about me? Let me tell you about my. He makes a way when there ain't no way Rises up from an empty grave Ain't no sinner that he can't save Let me tell you about my Jesus His love is strong and his grace is free And the good news is I know that he Can do for you what he's done for me Let me tell you about my Jesus let my Jesus change your life. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Happy Easter to each of you, and uh, we're glad to have you in here with us this morning. It's a bright, sunny day, and uh, the weather's going to be nice, I think. And so not only can we have some fun here in church, but hopefully you can have a good time afterwards, too, as well. Uh, we've got uh, some wonderful music that we want to keep sharing with you, and uh, there's a whole bunch of things that have been going on in the church that I wanted to just say a quick note of thanks to that. Uh, for those that all came and uh, helped yesterday for the Easter egg hunt, uh, we had uh, a good crowd of people helping and a good crowd showing up, and we also had a nice time um, going through all the stations that were set up for the little kids. So thank you all for that. Uh, and I just wanted to take an opportunity just to uh, say an Easter prayer for us this morning. And if you don't know who I am, I'm John Exman. I'm the uh, pastor here at Central Trinity. And if you'll bow your heads with me, I'll say a prayer. Dear Jesus, we thank you so much for your love and for your grace and uh, for all the wonder that we have in the hope of the resurrection and the, the love and life that you gave for us that on that third day you rose from the grave and the tomb was empty. What a special thing and what a special moment it is for each of us to share here together uh, with family and friends and with church friends and uh, be a part of this Easter Sunday. Um, we just ask that you watch over each person here and what they got going on in their own life throughout the week. And uh, bless us as we worship and bless this church. It's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Jesus calling us out from the grave like lies. Rise up, rise up, rise up, out from the grave like Lazarus. When he said your name, the thing that filled your veins was more than blood. It's the kind of love that washes sin away. Now the door is open stone's been rolled aside, the old is gone, the light has come, so come on and rise, rise up, take a breath, you're alive now, can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us, out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new power death couldn't hold you, can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us, out from the grave like lies, rise up, rise up, rise up. Out from the grave like lies, he's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. He's calling us to walk out of the dark. He's given us new resurrected hearts. Come on and rise up. Take a breath, you're alive now. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus, your brand new power death couldn't hold you. Can't you hear the voice of Jesus calling us? Out from the grave like Lazarus. Rise up, rise up. 
rose up out from the grave like Lazarus rise up rise up rise up out from the grave like Lazarus dear Heavenly Father we are just so thankful to be here in your presence on this Easter Sunday Bless our time of worship and bless our time of listening to these words, Lord. The words that were defined and written in your name, Lord. We love you, we praise you, and we thank you, God. And in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Well, again, I welcome you here this morning, uh, and it's it just doesn't always seem possible when we come to uh, one of those special church holidays that that time has flown, and we are already at that point. Uh, it just seems like Christmas was just yesterday. I don't know if it was the the weather and uh, the lack of certain types of cold weather, but it just seems like we've been puttering along, and here we are at Easter, and next thing you know. It's going to be like the 4th of July and right in the middle of everything, and uh, who knows. Uh, but we're, we are so glad to be able to be here and, and to share together. And uh, on this Easter Sunday, we've been talking the last few weeks about uh, a series that I've been doing on the I Am, the great I Am, and, and what God said to Moses when he said, I am the great I am, and then what Jesus said when he piggybacked on that uh, in the New Testament. Um, and I, I think that uh, the I am it is an important thing to understand uh, related to the resurrection. And this story really has no relation to that. But I, uh, in, in honor of uh, Tom England, uh, who had passed away a couple, a month or so ago from our church, uh, that was one of his favorite things to say at the beginning of the service. I have a story to tell you, and it has nothing to do with the sermon. And uh, this is just one of those fun ones. But a, a, a man and his wife were vacationing um, in Israel uh, with his wife's mother, so his mother-in-law. And during their time in the Holy Land, while they were all there together, uh, the mother-in-law passed away. And uh, it was a very sad, unexpected thing. And so the following day, they met with uh, a funeral service to try to figure out uh, what to do uh, with her since they were in a foreign country. And so the man explained and the funeral director explained and said, in cases like these, there's a couple of op options that you can do. Uh, it costs about $5,000 to ship the body uh, back home, or you can bury her here for $150. And uh, the man took a minute to think about it, and he said, well, you know what, uh, I'll just pay the 5000 and uh, let's just ship her home. And uh, the funeral director was thinking just a moment, and he said, you know, that's an interesting choice since that's your mother-in-law. You know, can I ask why you'd pay 5000 to to ship her home when you can easily bury her here for 150 in the Holy Land? And the man said, well, about 2,000 years ago, a man died, and three days later, he rose from the dead, and I just can't take that chance. <laughs> I didn't say it was good, just said it was a story. Uh, it's one of those old fun ones, though. So uh, we like to, you know, tell stories about the resurrection and what it means. And if you were listening to the music, they were actually singing about the I Am story here that we're discussing, the, the resurrection, uh, not only of Christ, but Christ bringing forth uh, Lazarus. And it comes from John uh, chapter 11, verses 25 through 27, and it'll be up there on the screen, and you can see that. And it starts with this. Ethan, can you put the scripture up there? Thanks, buddy. Uh, Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die. And whoever lives by believing in me will never die. Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. 
I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who is to come into the world. So if you could put that back on that first verse there, where it says Jesus said to her. So Jesus is coming, and his uh, friend, actually family member, is Lazarus. And the Bible tells us that Jesus was there approximately uh, four days after Lazarus had already been put into the grave. Uh, so in that time period of life, you know, that was a while. So there would have been a lot of things happening, you know, during that period. You can let your imagination go uh, with you there. And so Jesus, he was coming here to try and figure out uh, what to do about uh, his family member, his his friend. And uh, so he's, he's coming there, and um, after four days... He had been in the tomb, and uh, Bethany, where they lived, was just a couple of miles uh, from Jerusalem. And so many of the Jewish people had come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in the loss of their brother. And uh, so she heard that Jesus was coming, and they went out to meet him. Mary stayed at home, and Martha said, if you had been here, my brother would still be alive. But... I know that even now, God will give you whatever you ask. Um, And so Jesus said to her, your brother will will rise again. And Martha said, I know he will rise again in the resurrection of the last day. Now what they're talking about there, this all occurs right just before what I just read to you, is uh, she's saying, you know, I understand what your teaching is that, you know, when you die, that three days later you're going to uh, resurrect yourself. And then also in the last days when you return, the dead will rise in you. Those that love you, then uh, they will come and uh, be a part of us again. And so I understand what you mean when you say your brother will rise again. And Jesus is saying to her, now you don't understand, I am the resurrection. I'm not going to just resurrect Lazarus, but I am the resurrection. And uh, in the in the version that we read here from the NIV, it actually adds the the resurrection and the life. Uh, In some, the life part doesn't always occur there because they feel it's implied uh, with the Hebrew word of resurrection. But he's saying, "I am it." You think that it's something that you have to wait for. You think that it's something uh, that's going to happen a long time from now. But if you believe in me, I am the resurrection. And when you have that belief in me, then you will have that life in me. And so she says, after he asked her that question, do you believe this? Yes, I believe how hard would it to be if you uh, know that someone close to you can resurrect someone from the grave and your family member passes away and you know that person is just a short distance away and they hadn't come and done what they thought? They thought that he would just come in and next thing you know, everything would be good to go. Well, Jesus didn't do that. Many biblical scholars believe that he waited those four days with a purpose in mind. He knew that Lazarus was ill. He knew that he was going to pass away. And so he waited those four days so that he could come forward and do something even greater than what people had thought. In fact, many believe from the way... uh, that the story goes, you know, that Jesus goes to the tomb and says, Lazarus, come out. You know, the tomb opens and Lazarus does come out. Now, we know in those days how uh, people were buried. They were wrapped in that linen cloth. So imagine with you, you know, your favorite mummy movie and out comes Lazarus uh, looking like that big giant mummy walking forward. Probably not the greatest Smelling person, needed a bath, uh, had been dead for four days, you know. But here he is. And so they say, it's a miracle. 
And Jesus says, no, it's not a miracle. It's me. I am the resurrection, and I am the life. So how do they come to justify this? The part that often people forget about in this moment is that Lazarus not only was someone that Jesus was showing this great miracle with, but it was also uh, someone that indirectly was someone that he loved and was related to him. And so he asked them when they say, are you going to do this? Where have you laid him? And they say, come and see. And he sees this great emotion that's on their face. And that's when he knows the emotion that he feels. And right there uh, is the shortest verse in the Bible. It's verse 35 there of chapter 11. Anybody know what it is? Jesus wept. Jesus cried. A lot of people don't understand that, right? Jesus is just like us. When he says, I am not only God but man, he cries. He's sad. He's upset. It's the loss of a loved one. He sees the pain that Mary and Martha are going through, and so he wept. Well, there are the people that are there and mourning say, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could he not who opened the eyes of the blind man had kept this man from dying? And that's when Jesus says, all right, enough is enough. Take away the stone. Lazarus, come out. What a great moment that is because not only then does Jesus bring Lazarus back from the grave, but then he looks up to the heavens and he says this short prayer. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me, but I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you have sent me. Here's Jesus, and he's saying a prayer, saying a prayer to God and saying, thank you for what I know that you are already going to do, which is raise my friend from the dead. Do we truly believe? Do we truly believe when we know in life that Jesus is going to take care of us? In Matthew, he says, uh, before he leaves to go back to heaven, go and make disciples in all the nations, baptizing in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And when you do that, know this, I'll be with you always, even until the end of the age. And so here what he's really saying is, is you don't have to wait for the end. You don't have to wait for the resurrection of all those dead ones who love me because you don't have to wait for the end because I am the end. I am the alpha and the omega, the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me, even though he or she will die, you will also live. And everyone who lives believing in me does not ultimately die. It's one of those sayings that he says that people probably were looking at him and saying, I don't quite get what you're getting at here, you know. We know that in the end you've said it millions of times since you've been here that, you know, we will raise from the dead when that time comes. The dead will rise, the Bible says. But Jesus is saying, you don't have to wait for the end because I am the end. I am the end, I am the beginning, and I am the in-between. So all this being so much more important than when Jesus does his own resurrection. And you know the story, and it reads like this. After Sabbath, 
On the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. The women could not make the trip to the tomb until after the Sabbath. And as dawn approached, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary came to see the tomb. Both of them had been at Jesus, been with Jesus at the cross and followed Joseph, so they knew where the tomb was located. They knew that that time there was coming. And so here it was. They arrived on daybreak on Sunday, the third day, and Jesus had already risen. The tomb was empty. The stone was rolled away. A lot of people, we try to think about that, right? What does it mean that the tomb was empty? Wouldn't it have been better if everyone would have been able to see and Jesus had put it on closed circuit TV, you know, around the world and boom, the stone rolled away and Jesus came out. But you see, Jesus didn't have to come out. The stone rolled away, not so Jesus could come forth like Lazarus, but the stone rolled away so you and I could see in. Because it's seeing in at that moment, that was our opportunity to share in that story of resurrection. Because resurrection is a word that's difficult. It's hard to understand. Raising from the dead. And here, Jesus is saying it again. He's saying, I am the resurrection. When he appears to people later on, he tells them, look, believe. Believe that. Believe in me. If you don't, here, look. Here's the wounds on my hand, the wounds on my feet the pierce in my side. Touch it, see it. And we don't have the opportunity to do that, right? But you know what Hebrews tells us? Hebrews tells us that faith is the evidence of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. It's things that you hope for, but it's things that you can't see that make it so much more valuable. Faith is so much more valuable and belief because you are putting all your trust in something that you can't reach out and grab. And so on that day, when the earthquake came, the stone rolled away. The soldier who was present said, Surely this man was the Son of God. And so the story was left to be told by the ones that were present. And it's gone down in history. Year after year, time after time. On Easter, we come together and we tell this story And so often maybe we think it's not a big deal. I've heard it a million times, right? If you've grown up in church and you're of a certain age, you've probably heard it a couple hundred times that Jesus rose from the grave. But have you ever really taken it in and said, I believe in the resurrection? That's why uh, in the second service, As Methodists, uh, we use that liturgical repeat-after-me type stuff. Not so that we can brainwash you, you know, so that you can say, uh, we say, say the Apostles' Creed, and you say, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. No, it's not supposed to be like that. It's supposed to be, I believe. It's I believe statements because this belief is, should be greater than anything that we could imagine because we believe that God, the creator of everything, also created the one who died on a cross for our sins 
And then three days later, the grave couldn't hold him. What a moment that is. I am the resurrection and I am the life. Are you one of the ones who believes in me, in him? He who believes in me will live. You will never die. It's not about the physical. It's not about physical life or physical death. We know that life is such that each one of us will eventually someday die. It's not something that we like to think about, right? It's not something that we want to think about if your parents for your kids or if your kids for your parents or your family or anyone in between because we don't want to think about those things. So God does it for us. He says, don't worry about that because you have me and I am the resurrection and I am life. And so if you're going through life and you're just on that pilot of, I believe, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and you just say those things but you don't mean them, then you're missing out on that wondrous truth, the truth that comes in the hope that we have on this day. It's why we should think of Easter not just on this day, but every day. Because every day that you wake up, it's a day that the Lord's made. And it's a glorious day. And it's a day that Jesus says, come, come with me and let me take you on this journey of life. No longer do you need to be afraid or upset. No longer do you need to feel alone or left out. No longer do you need to feel burdened with life, overwhelmed by the circumstances that you're in. I know, I know how you feel too. I feel all those same things in myself. And there's certain times we get in those moments, but as long as we come back to, I am resurrection and I am life, do you believe? Then everything else will take care of itself. Why? Because life just happens. Look at that little life right there. Hey, buddy. He's coming around the corner. Why? Why are kids so inquisitive? Why are little ones like that? They're like that because they want to know life. And we can have that life. And it'll be glorious. All you've got to do is believe. If you'll stand with us. One day when heaven was filled with his praises, one day when sin was as black as could be, Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin, dwelt among men, my example is he. Word became flesh and the light shined among us, his glory revealed. Living he loved me, dying he saved me. Buried, he carried my sins far away. Rising, he justified freely forever. One day 
he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day. One day they led him up Calvary's mountain. One day they nailed him to die on a tree. Suffering anguish, despised and rejected. Wearing our sins, my Redeemer is he. One day the grave could conceal him no longer. One day the stone rolled away from the door. Then he arose over death he had conquered. Now is ascended, my Lord evermore. Death could not hold him. The grave could not keep him from rising again. Living he loved me, dying he saved me, buried he carried my sins far away. Rising he justified, freely forever, one day he's coming. trumpet will sound for his coming one day the skies with his glory will shine wonderful day my beloved one bringing glorious savior jesus is mine Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Glorious day. Living he loved me. Dying he saved me. Buried he my sins fall away, rising me just high, freely forever. One day he's coming, oh glorious day, oh glorious day, glorious day. sing one more song with you this morning but when you leave today truly remember the sacrifice that was made and the glorious thing that happened on this Easter Sunday that he is risen from the tomb and that you are free because of the love he has for you a love so powerful that can never be broken
longer bound. You call me out of the grave. You call me into the light. You call my name and then my heart came alive. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Feel the darkness shaking. All the dead are coming back to life. Come back to life. Hear the song awaken. All creation singing, we're alive. Cause you're alive You call me out of the grave You call me into the light You call my name and then my heart came alive Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me Your love is greater Your love is stronger Your love awakens, awakens awakens me what a love we found death can't hold us down we shouted out we're alive cause you're alive and what a love we found death can't hold us down we shouted out we're alive cause you're alive and what a love we found death can't hold us down we shouted out we're alive, cause you're alive. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater. Stronger, your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. Your love is greater, your love is stronger. Your love awakens, awakens, awakens me. We hope you have a great Easter, guys, and a great week ahead. Take the words that you learned today and spread the news. Bye, guys. See you later.